All right, so today we're going to just review this 1975 spy adventure here. The Acts of Atlantis by Lee Grimes. Um, there wasn't a lot about Mr. Grimes online, so this is all I could find. Uh, he has one pseudonym, and it's Fremont Dodge. So, under the Fremont Dodge name, he wrote one book, it was called Muck Man. <laughs> And then under his own name, he wrote three sci-fi books, one children's books, and two of these Chandra Smith adventure spy books, which is a shame because it was really good. Uh, and then was born in Nebraska in 1920, died in Connecticut in 2009. So he didn't write too many, too many books. Uh, there's not a lot about him out there. This is the second in a series of the Chandra Smith, the Chandra Smith uh, adventure. Uh, I picked it up because, uh, well, first off, I thought that it was a female spy because the Chandra Smith name sounded like a woman's name. And to be fair, when I was looking up other books in this series online, every Chandra Smith that popped up was a female. Uh, but this Chandra is Indian, uh, half half white, half Indian. So Chandra Smith is a dude, which is funny because I'm not the only person that thought that because when I looked up other reviews, uh, there was a site that had it and it had it as a female also, which means I guess they didn't read it. Um, so yeah, I was like, look at that. It's like the Minotaur and Spies, and I was like, what is this thing? Is it like a fantasy crossover? And, um, it's not, but it's very historical, I guess. I'll tell you what, let's just get into the story. So, it starts off, uh, in Crete island Greece and they're in this empty cavern I guess and there's a, a man with a bullhead a minotaur type man he's got a big double axe and there's kind of a, uh, a court courtroom setting going on there's a trial and uh, the man on trial is uh, for treason He's on trial for treason against the group of the whatever this cult is. You don't know. It just kind of starts, and um, and it ends with you know the guy is obviously gonna get killed, and uh, they take him over to the sacrificing stone and chop his head off with the giant axe. So it's good. It's a cool start, um, and it goes right into our introduction of Chandra. Um, so this is the second part. There's only two books that were written in the series. So this is the second one. I haven't read the first one. So it's kind of like a backstory catching up what's going on from the last book. He's upset. Uh, he's in some bar and he's wasted and he starts a bar fight and then like starts to lose. And then this guy jumps in and is like, oh, he's with me on the police. And it takes him away, but that's really his contact um, called Mr. Ames. Uh, so Mr. Ames works for some kind of organization that, I don't know, takes care of worldwide bad guys. Um, it's kind of, uh, you know, superhero cartoonish, kind of like a cartoonish James Bond kind of thing. So I don't know if it's the actual U.S. government or what, but <clears throat> it's just some wealthy guy. Um, so Chandra works for them sometimes, and he's like an art dealer or something. I don't, you know, they just kind of glance over it because it was all mentioned in the first one. Um, so the backstory is like, <laughs> I guess in the first one he finds 
this woman he loves and uh and I'm assuming at the end they leave together and I guess in between books they like go to get married or they get married or whatever and he's like they're just like hanging out and they go to some party and there's like a lunatic there and I don't know like the guy smashes something over her head and now she's in a coma it just it was really funny to me that the, the author had to find out some way to get rid of this woman so he puts her in a coma and a random act of violence <clears throat> so yeah that was I was like oh man this is going to be so awesome this is where this guy is already heading um <laughs> So yeah, Chandler's really upset. He's uh, heartbroken. His wife's in a coma. Uh, and then Mr. Ames comes. He's like, hey, I got something for you to do. I need you to go to uh, Crete because my niece is there. And I think she might be in trouble. Uh, she's working for this guy. And he's kind of like, it looks to be corrupt. It's probably a little vacation for you, but go ahead and check it out. Kind of like uh, Dr. No. Like, this is going to be an easy one. Go ahead and go to this paradise and just hang out. So Chandra is like, okay, whatever. And he goes, and uh, and then you meet the, the niece, Sarah. Uh, she's an ex-Olympic gymnast, uh, archaeologist. And she believes in Atlantis. She thinks it was real, that it was in Crete. And she's all about finding these artifacts that prove that Atlantis was Crete. Um, and there we also meet the um, the guy she's working for. It's like the sailor, uh, this admiral, ex-admiral who owns his own submarine. And has this like crew of uh, sailors. Uh, he's obviously... Uh, um, it's not like a secret anything. He's he's the villain. He's like the uh, over the top, um, you know, villain James Bond type villain, diabolical, uh, rich, uh, kind of insane world domination. So this uh, so the captain, uh, what's his name? It's hard to remember. So I had to write it down. Nikos Vezalakis. Nikos Vezalakis. So he's the admiral, uh, the leader of the cult, the Minotaur. He's uh, says he's the descendant of Minos, Minos, the ruler of Crete, uh, and he's also the Minotaur. And you know, there was a lot that I didn't get. I didn't know anything about the history of Crete, Greece, any of that. And man, this is like really in depth. Like th this author went to town. Uh, looking this stuff up, the, the locations, the history, the, the theories, the conspiracies, uh, the mythology. It's it's really awesome. Okay, so yeah, so Chandra shows up um, and is meets the girl. Is like, oh, she's hot, you know, of course. And they go like scuba diving or whatever, and then Chandra discovers this weird underwater. Thing while he's scuba diving and then there's bad guy in his sub and he's like you know starts attacking him with the the sub has little arms and it's like trying to grab him and Chandra's swimming away so he gets away and but he had like the suit on so you can't he doesn't he knows he, the guy didn't see him so he doesn't know who it is so he goes up and then they eventually meet in real real life real they, they meet up top and it's pretty uh you know pretty soon that the guy figures out that chandra was the guy and it's this sort of um like when they're next they're it's very james bond they're like the enemies there james bond is there they're talking to each other they know that they're each other's enemy but it's all civil so then it goes from there where the guy is uh, losing it more and he's kind of trying to skin closer. You know, I'm not going to tell you what happens, but it's, it's really good. Um, 
there's another character, uh, some girl that, some woman that Chandra hooked up with in the first one, and she reappears here, which is funny. It's, uh, some French lady, big tits. Um, and she also takes part in this, like, basically the, the bad guy is going to recreate this ancient ceremony, and then once... The ceremony is done, then it's an offering to Poseidon, and then he takes over the world or something. It's, you know, it's ridiculous, but, I mean, the guy is, is crazy. So I guess the ridiculousness isn't so much like the plot's ridiculous, it's this guy's ridiculous, but the danger is still there. So it's cool. It's, and, I mean, the setting, I love the whole the Greek aspect and the mythology um, it was really funny after, in between, um, reading it and writing this review or recording this review, we were in Columbus and we went to this store called the Witch Lab, which is like a witch store. And as I was, I was looking around, there was a, a miniature statue of this Crete, Crete goddess. Uh, what's her name? The Cretan snake goddess. Uh, which is basically this woman holding two snakes and her boobs are hanging out, giant boobs. And then there's like this ruffled uh, skirt. But it was really cool because it was just like, it was just like in the book. That that statue was in this book and it was described exactly the same. And in fact, I didn't even read the little placard. When I seen it, I was like, hey, that's that statue from the book. So I um, thought that was kind of a weird uh, coincidence. Um, yeah, it's a shame that, uh, this is the last one because it was cool. It was a lot of fun. It was kind of like, uh, James Bond meets, uh, Indiana Jones a little. Um, and was, man, it went fast. The action was good. And the, the ending was, I thought like very exciting. You know, I really wanted, I was like, I was, I was way into it. I cruised right through it. Um, yeah, man, it's a shame that uh, he never wrote anymore. I would uh, recommend it to anyone who's into uh, history, mythology, and uh, spy, men's adventure type stuff. Uh, my book fell apart when I was reading it. Maybe I'll have to find some videos on how to repair it.